Joining us now, uh, Becky, I've been trying to kind of go over the highlights of what happened. Give us a little more detail of what went on in court today as we sit and wait to find out how long Michael Slager will spend in prison. Hey, Brad, good morning. It was a little stunning. The judge came in, sat down, and immediately went in uh, to how he was going to rule on the couple of issues, the murder two versus manslaughter. He just got right to it, as well as the obstruction of justice. Um, and, and then we heard from Walter Scott's family. And the most poignant moment, uh, at least from my perspective, was when there weren't any words being said. Walter Scott's mother, Judy, came in and she made statements, but she turned around and she addressed Michael Slager staring, staring at his eyes, saying to him that she forgives him and asking him to accept Jesus into his heart and be forgiven, saying that she forgives him. And then there was a moment where they were locking eyes and there were no words exchanged, but you knew that both of them were in tears, both of them devastated by what happened. And it was just a moment with this mother who lost her son and a man who was about to spend a large chunk of his life behind bars. It really was, the feeling really was palpable. There was also a really emotional moment when Rodney Scott, that's Walter's youngest brother, got up and he held in his hand a light bulb, the light bulb that would have been in the tail light of Walter Scott's car. And he said that he got it and it was a dollar fifteen. And he said, my brother died over a dollar and 15 cent light bulb. And you could tell that just the magnitude of the loss versus what started this entire situation, you could just feel the heaviness of, of what he was saying. He went on to tell the judge that he didn't understand why this went so far. And then he also said, that he hurt for Michael Slager's youngest son. You may remember Michael Slager's wife had a baby uh, just a couple of weeks after this shooting. But he followed up by saying that Walter Scott's children are now without their father and that he would never walk his daughter down the aisle. There was a lot of emotional testimony as we expected. Uh, when I came downstairs here, Brad, Scarlett Wilson was speaking, addressing the court, saying that she was glad that this situation was being handled in federal court because of the global implications of this case and, and what this means, not just to Charleston, not just closing this out for the people here in the low country, but closing this out for the people in the United States, all uh, you know, that are feeling the effects of what's going on around our country. So we are taking a short break. It's likely we will hear from some more uh, victim impact statements, if you call them that. It's likely we will hear from Michael Slager's family members, perhaps even Michael Slager himself. You may remember he took the stand in the state trial. We didn't hear from him during sentencing so far. Uh, so we, we still have a little ways to go, Brad, but it is likely we will know the fate of Michael Slager here very shortly. I'm Rebecca Collette reporting live downtown Charleston. Count on two. All right, Rebecca, we'll let you get back inside. Great reporting for us. Uh, we'll